Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items to add to a vignette that is needing some work. So, um, so we're going to start with this clock and I thrifted this clock for $5.99 and oddly enough it worked. Um, the back was a little bit hard to open and that was the only thing that was wrong with it uh, except that I, this color to me was just hideous on it. It was kind of a, almost a pinky looking brown. It, it just wasn't a good color at all. And this was a Hobby Lobby piece and it was extremely heavy. And it's really hard to tell here the size of this thing, but this was a very big clock. And uh, had I had room for this at my house, this would have went to my house. Um, but all I needed to do to this clock was um, paint it and so I'm painting this the color drop cloth and it's the drop cloth is a very good um, off-white and uh, it's a Dixie Belle color uh, but I put two coats of this uh, this paint on here and I didn't even bother taping off the uh, face of the clock because uh, I'm just going to wipe it with a baby wipe and as long as you don't wait too long to clean it off after it dries it, it wipes off really well so I, I didn't even tape it uh, but I give this two coats of the color drop cloth and then I give it um, some uh, distressing I, I use the sandpaper uh, to sand some off and then I used a baby wipe to finish uh, distressing it and then of course I had to clear coat this so uh, I just used some clear wax on it and uh, that's all that that I had to do to this clock so this was the first item that was going to be added to that vignette and I started putting that vignette together to decide what all it needed. And so I went ahead and put the clock in it. And um, someone came in the store and bought it. So I wasn't able to, uh, to add this to uh, that vignette. And uh, so I bought this clock for uh, $5.99. $4.99 or $5.99. I think it was $5.99. So I added a couple of coats of paint, did some light distressing, and put some clear wax on it. And I sold it today for $35. And I felt like that was a really good profit in, in a very short time. And if you had seen this clock in person, $35 was a really good value. And then the next items that I'm going to be adding to this uh, vignette are a couple of wall pockets uh, because I have a couple of places on either side of the window uh, that I felt like needed a matching a matching set. So uh, I decided on these wall pockets and I keep fencing boards uh, and I usually keep some pieces cut up already and so I just found two of those pieces that were the same height and uh, I'm just giving them a coat of drop cloth and I'm just painting the front because I'm going to be doing some distressing around the edges uh, because these these pieces are just cut but not sanded so um, like I said I'm just going to paint around the edges and I'm going to be doing sanding so the sides are not going to be needing to be painted anyway and now this is a napkin and it has uh, some lavender on it and uh, I got these at uh, Marshall's and I really use these napkins a lot. There's several in the pack and uh, I just love lavender. So uh, I use this a lot in my store. And uh, so I'm just, uh, I've taken one layer of the napkin and uh, now I'm decoupaging that one layer onto the front of uh, these boards. And it doesn't have to be cut perfect because we're, like I said, once it dries, we're gonna be sanding around the edges to do some distressing. So 
So once I get these sanded well around the edges, I'm not only sanding to uh, neaten up the edges of this decoupage, but these boards are freshly cut and hadn't been sanded yet, so I'm just kind of giving them a smooth edge around the outside. And then uh, my next step will be adding the pocket. And what I've chosen for this pocket is just an old um, doily or table runner. Uh, and I love the lace on the, uh, on the outside of this. But this doily, I wouldn't dare cut this up except that it has stains all over it. So I'm just picking a couple areas that don't have the stain so that I can use that edging uh, for the top of my pocket. And I was planning on folding it down like the first one there and decided that I liked it better with just that, uh, with just that lace turned down. And then, um, so I just add a little bit of glue to the top of that. And then, uh, and then I secure it all the way around. Now, I made a mistake here uh, because I was trying to make it really neat and in doing that, I made it too tight. And when you're making a pocket, a wall pocket, you need to leave room for what you're gonna put inside it. So um, I was forced to do a couple of steps extra to this to hide that. Uh, but like I said, when you do it, for one thing, you wanna use a semi-stiff fabric, but you also want, want to leave yourself uh, some space to stuff that pocket. So because I didn't do that, my first idea here was to put a piece of cardboard behind it so that my flower stems wouldn't show. Uh, that kept my flower stems from showing, uh, but then you could see that little um, cardboard. So I went ahead and stuffed uh, my pockets and then I thought well I'll just figure out something after I get these stuffed and see what it needs so uh, I added my um, lavender pick that I've cut apart I just cut the pieces off of it and this lavender I bought several years ago from our um, vendor that we buy our flowers from and uh, I don't know I went crazy buying this stuff I guess it was a good deal uh, because I, I bought so much and I'm still using it and still have plenty to sell so um, so that was perfect for me to put in these little wall pockets once I got these stuffed and I s saw what it was going to need uh, then I I decided to add yet another layer to this piece and that's fine because I like I like a lot of my items to be layered I think the more layers that you add to items like this the better they look uh, I, but I wouldn't have had to do that if if I hadn't messed up and made these too tight but then I remembered my uh, baking sheets these are the disposable baking sheets that you get at the dollar tree and they're great for crafting i don't know if you've ever used them but they are wonderful for crafting and you would think that you would cut yourself on them uh, i mean i guess it's possible to but i never have and so i just cut two pieces the size that i needed to layer in the front of that and now i'm painting these in the color drop cloth and uh, once this dried uh, then I, I put another coat on it to make sure it was covered good and then I trimmed it up to make sure it was good and square and that's easy with these because you have those little lines to go by and this stuff cuts really good and you don't have to worry about dulling your scissors because if anything it sharpens them so um, it it's really good to work with. So now I'm just taking some brown and just slightly dragging it across and going around the edges to do some distressing to this. And then I'm adding another layer. And this is just a little piece of tea towel that I've torn in a square a little smaller than, uh, than the previous layer. And then I'm just putting a little stamp on this. And uh, this stamp uh, is I think part of the uh, Icy Paris set, um, but um, 
I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty sure that it was part of that set. And I'm just uh, stamping some green ink on here. Some olive green stays on ink on these pockets. And then I will glue those on the front of that baking sheet. So I've let my baking sheet dry. As a matter of fact, I have a toaster oven at the shop and I put them in that toaster oven on very low heat uh, so that they would dry because they're the, the metal that I could do that with. But I left them in a little bit too long and as you can tell, uh, it changed the color, but I was okay with that. It, it, still, it still worked. Uh, but if you put these in the oven to dry, then keep an eye on them. Sometimes I also dry my glass items uh, in a like a 200 degree oven because it'll bake that paint on and help it stay really well. So I just glue these there on the front and then uh, all these little these little pockets need is a hanger and as you've seen me do before I just tie a knot and uh, I've, I've ripped a piece of Chanel here and I've tied a knot in each end and then just glue that to the front and that's all that you have to do for the hanger and it works really well because these little fencing boards cut in these little sections like this are very lightweight and I thought these turned out really good, even though I made a couple of big mistakes on them. Uh, but I thought they looked really good on the wall on both sides of the window. So the next item that I'm going to make is a garland to go above the window. So all that I'm doing for this garland is I've tied a piece of twine and I use the front of my front desk here to, to tie this on and it gives me a good place to, uh, to work from. So this is just little strips of Chanel that I'm tying on first. And then uh, once I get those tied all the way uh, down this, this string, then I just keep adding other colors. I've used, um, I've added some uh, coffee stained uh, tea towel. I use that all the time in my projects. I'm sure you guys get tired of hearing me say that. But, uh, and then I've just used strips of, of different things. I've cut up some laces and, uh, and just kept tying them on until I felt like it was full enough. Now with these garlands, they're so simple to make. You can even tie on other items if you want, uh, but you can make them as sparse as you want or as full as you want. So just keep tying things on and it's always best when you can rip your fabric instead of cut it. If, there, if you're using a fabric that can be ripped, then it's much better to rip it because the shabbier, the better. Uh, but you just kind of keep tying them on and you can use your you can cut your strips thinner or thicker uh, I probably should have gone a little bit thicker on this one uh, But there it is finished And then the last item that I'm gonna make over here is gonna be a very very simple makeover and I bought several of these little jewelry hangers and um, a while back and um, there they came just like this with that raw metal and what I do is just paint as I need one I just kind of paint it whatever color I need it to be for the vignette so here I'm using the color sea glass and I'm putting uh, one good coat is covering this well so I just put one good coat of the color sea glass in Dixie Belle. And then once this is dry, then, uh, then I just distress it. I wet distress it with just a, a damp cloth. So like I said, this is a very, very quick and easy um, makeover on this item. I like to have certain items like this that I can just kind of paint whatever color that I want whatever color that I need in my vignette and like I said these don't take up much space anyway so this is a good item to do that with and now I'll just kind of take you through that vignette and show you uh, it's not as full as I would like it to be but it 
it really emptied out and I just kind of added what I had time to add right now and um, and then um, I'll just kind of add more later but I'm trying to pick the areas in my store that are the worst and fill them in as well as I can and then I'll just add more later and like I said this is just outside of my she shack it's one of the outer walls of that little she shack and um, and there's that wild pocket on the sides of the window there and um, I think it added just enough uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next have a good evening and God bless you and your family